of the Oak Ridge Boys. My mother and the rest of the members of the National Assembly, they were in prison for two weeks only before they were executed. Religious martyrs, the Baha'is, murdered in Iran, their houses destroyed, their graves desecrated, and their bodies marked enemy of Islam. But they won't give up their faith. Bob Brown with the tragedy of the Baha'is, persecuted in Iran in the name of Islam. In recent weeks in Iran, 16 members of the Baha'is that we know about were hanged. They were executed in spite of an appeal for clemency by President Reagan. Those killed included three teenage girls, plus this entire family. They died in Iran for their faith. And here with a report on this modern-day martyrdom is Bob Brown. Bob? Barbara, the fundamentalist Muslim government in Iran has displayed an intense hatred of the Baha'is that stems in part from how the tenets of the faith differ from Islam, sometimes radically. Among other things, the Baha'is believe in equality of the sexes, eventual world government, universal education, and in practicing their religion without clergy, all concepts that have infuriated Iran's leaders. In general, the Baha'is practice a gentle faith that advocates meeting violence with serenity. And in Iran today, that tenet of the Baha'i faith is being tested in the extreme. This is a photograph of leaders of the Baha'i faith in Iran, including the entire membership of the Baha'i National Spiritual Assembly. All but one are now dead, executed, or missing and presumed dead. I was surprised that the execution took place so quickly. Uh, my mother and the rest of the members of the National Assembly, they were in prison for two weeks only before they were executed. Ramna Mahmoudi now lives in the United States. Her mother, an Iranian physicist and meteorologist, was killed in December of 1981. Her father, an Iranian television personality, simply vanished a year and a half before her mother's execution. I don't know who pulled this trigger. A Muslim god, most likely. Whoever it was, he was doing a job for his government in the name of Islam, for the Islamic government of Iran. And they have no shame to cover that up at all, because we are the infidels. My father was a doctor, a physician. He was alone in his office, and he was shot by this patient. He was shot by one of his own patients? Yes. Dr. Paul Hakim lives in France. His father, a Baha'i doctor who, he says, treated many Iranian casualties from the war with Iraq, was murdered two years ago and mourned by hundreds of his friends at the Baha'i Cemetery in Tehran. Do you think that the order for your father's execution was handed down by the government of Iran? A week after, officially from the government, they came to take the house and take everything. That showed that it was maybe a plan because the old leaders of the Baha'i faith had been executed, had been kidnapped. Iran's Islamic revolution under the Ayatollah Khomeini again focused attention and hatred on the three to four hundred thousand Baha'is who live in Iran, attacks that followed a long history of persecution. Whereas Christians can freely practice their religion in Iran, and even Jewish ceremonies are tolerated under Muslim rule, Baha'is are denied recognition of their faith, which ironically was born in Iran in 1844. Baha'is believe their faith grew out of Islam the way Christianity grew out of Judaism. They believe their founder was the most recent of God's messengers on earth, like Moses, Jesus, Buddha, Mohammed, a prophet. But Islam recognizes no prophet since Mohammed, and so Baha'is in Iran are denounced as heretics. The principles of the Baha'i faith, the fact that you have to independently investigate the truth for yourself, you do not need any more laws, Muslim clergy, to get in touch with God or to go to heaven, for that, for that matter, uh, that creates a lot of animosity. Early Baha'is were chained and persecuted for following the prophet who outlined the principles of the faith in the late 19th century, a man called Baha'u'llah. During one period, 20,000 of those first adherents were put to death often under the pretext of being agents of the colonial powers who then threatened Persia. Back then, they were labeled British spies or Russian lackeys. Nowadays, they're called American agents or collaborators with Iraq. But the most troublesome charge of all is that they are instruments of Zionism because their world center, holiest shrine, and prime place of pilgrimage 
by accident of history, is in the state of Israel. But the Baha'i Center was located here long before the modern Israeli state was founded, because Baha'u'llah, the Baha'i prophet, was ordered into exile to the Holy Land from Iran. He was imprisoned in this jail by the Turks in the city of Akko, in what was then called Palestine. Eventually, his confinement in this prison was relaxed, and he was moved to a nearby mansion, where he was kept under house arrest. There, he wrote, received his followers, and finally was buried in 1892. At that point, a shrine was raised here in nearby Haifa, and the Holy Land became the spiritual center of the Baha'i faith. In 1953, construction was completed on an ornate dome erected over the shrine. This monument to Baha'ism is one of the most visible landmarks, day and night, in this Israeli city. Don Barrett is an American Baha'i, a former attorney for the Gulf Oil Corporation who now lives in Haifa and is the Secretary General of the Baha'i World Center. The Iranian government has charged that because you're in Israel, you were dependent to a certain extent in Israel, and that would at least make you sympathetic to the cause and at worst would make you collaborators with the Israelis. How do you respond to that? Completely baseless. Baha'is are totally self-supporting. We don't receive nor do we ask for any grants from this government or any other government throughout the world. Our relations here are based on mutual respect. We have friendly relations with this government, as does any Baha'i community anywhere throughout the world. Baha'ism is a political movement and not a religion and it has the mosque of, it has a religious mosque, uh, that's all. Saeed Rajai Khorasani is Iran's ambassador to the United Nations. A report prepared by the Iranian UN mission claims the charges of persecution of the Baha'is are propaganda, that Baha'ism is not a religion, but a front for enemy agents. Generally, among the leaders, we had a good number of them uh, who were agents of uh, America or Israel. And they were executed? Oh, yes. It, 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 it had nothing to do with uh, Baha'ism. It just happened that we had among Muslims also people who have been executed. But in the report that was filed by your mission to the United Nations, though, mm -hmm. it mentioned specifically that because the Baha'i World Center was in Haifa, that Israel, which you said was an anti-Islamic power, was therefore the nourishing cradle of Baha'is. There is a relation between Israel and Baha'ism, no doubt. We also know that the, uh, the uh, Baha'i World Center is in Haifa. We have also historical evidence which supports the strong relation between the creation of Baha'ism on the one hand and Zionism on the other. And although Islamic leaders also believe Baha'is strongly supported the Shah of Iran, these radio attacks against the Baha'is were broadcast in 1955 when the Shah was in power and the Baha'i National Center in Tehran was taken over by the army and dismantled piece by piece with the ceremonial help of Muslim clergymen and officers of the Shah's military. This film, obtained by 2020 through Baha'i Contacts, is being seen on television for the first time. The destruction of the center signaled attacks on Baha'i communities, and passions began to cool only after the United Nations and several governments applied diplomatic pressure. After the Islamic Revolution, more destruction. A revolutionary guard standing atop the holiest of all Baha'i shrines in Iran, the house of a merchant in Shiraz where the foundation of the faith was laid. This eight millimeter film smuggled out of Iran at great risk to the photographer, shows the destruction of the house in September of 1979. Would the Iranian government consider protecting Baha'is if it felt they were in great danger? It depends. You see, under the law, every people has some protection, depending on what he is doing and what situation it is. If some people are, uh, people who are walking in the street, if they are attacked, of course they are protected. But, uh, uh, you know, what do you mean by protection? To what extent? For what? For what sort of activities? Protection has a very... Protection in the sense that uh, in 1979, their holiest shrine was... 
dismantled. The, the, the shrine is down. not considered holy. We, con we take it as a conspiracy. Very simple. For this, you have to say there is no, no, no protection. The Baha'is think the executions now are more systematic than in the past. Many bodies have been marked with the term enemy of Islam. Because Baha'i marriages are sometimes not viewed as legal, women may be condemned as prostitutes, children as bastards. These photographs supplied by the Baha'is show what they say are desecrated grave sites. If there is so much hatred and danger, why stay in Iran? Because when you want to leave Iran, you have to apply for passport. And there is a section which they ask about your religion. And as Baha'i, you will write Baha'i in it. And as soon as you write Baha'i, the word Baha'i, they don't let you go. Farid Akhtar Kavari and his brother, Badi, both have lived in Florida since before the Islamic Revolution. But their mother and father continued to live in Iran. Their father, a merchant and teacher, whose execution order, they claim, was handed down by a student. As they took him to prison, all he needed was to say that he's not Baha'i. Uh, the Revolutionary Guard, they offered my father, you say that you are Zoroastrian, which was our, uh, my grandfather's previous religion. And my father refused that. And so what had happened, I think a few hours later, they executed him. After the execution, his house was confiscated, and his widow, Banu Akhtar Kavari, escaped from Iran. She told us in her native language that before she left, there was one final humiliation. She says the executioners of her husband required that she reimburse them for the bullets. Is it customary to request that kind of compensation in a situation this like is, that? Uh, this is irrelevant. This, if this is customary, it has nothing to do with the boys. It must be, uh, you know, for everybody who is uh, killed, and therefore the family must pay for the bullet. If they don't ask others to pay for the bullet, they don't ask Baha'is either. One of the figures that some Baha'is are executed recently in Iran, she automatically starts crying and she feels much anguish. <laughs> It reminds uh, her of the scene when she saw her husband. It is purely and simply religious fanaticism which uh, causes this persecution, and they don't want the world to know it. In fact, in many cases where the Baha'is have been tortured and accused of being spies for Israel or spies for the United States, and yet they can go free if they merely sign a piece of paper saying that they are Muslims and they recant their Baha'i faith. Well, this is obviously the, the answer to the false charges. Every week, firesides are held here, Baha'i firesides. Uh... The Akhtar Kabari family continues to attend Baha'i meetings in the United States, where there are approximately 100,000 Baha'is in 7,200 communities. Worldwide Baha'i membership is estimated at 3 to 4 million, spread through more than 360 countries and territories. They have mounted a massive public relations campaign to bring attention to their plight in Iran. And resolutions of concern have been expressed by the European Parliament, by the United Nations Human Rights Commission, by the United States Congress, which held hearings into the executions last year, and most recently by the U.S. State Department, whose 1983 Human Rights Report contends, in the Department's words, that a number of Iran's government leaders belong to a society specifically directed at the extirpation of the Baha'i faith. Do you consider Baha'is to be heretics? I think they are sacrilegious. Like, they are heretics. What do you mean by heretics? Heretics in the sense of... It is not a, a religion. I, I told you, I consider it as a political, uh, a, uh, treacherous political movement created primarily by the Russians then supported strongly by the British, and now um, has uh, the uh, uh, strong support of uh, American media and foreign policy and uh, everything. Are they a threat to Islam? No, they are a threat to the good uh, and uh, to uh, the welfare and happiness of, of the third world countries. After, you know, things that happened to my parents happened, 
I really try to really get in touch with my feelings, see how I feel about that country, in the sense that uh, my parents died for that country. And um, I know I'm hated by that country. I know I'm not wanted. And that hurts. That hurts that uh, everything that is good and wonderful has to be killed in that country and destroyed. But I do feel Iranian in a sense. Bob, does our government's protest make any difference? Well, apparently not, Barbara. Another 22 Baha'is were arrested just last week. And the Iranians have viewed statements of support from the Reagan administration simply as more evidence that there is some kind of conspiracy or arrangement between our government and leaders of the faith. But it's 